Hey guys, Blake here with another video and today I want to talk about the pros and cons of an absolute staple in the aquarium hobby, sponge filters. Let's jump straight into the video. So if you've been in the aquarium hobby for a while, you've probably no doubt come across at some point uh, sponge filters. and. In the beginning they are a bit confusing, I understand that, and if you're here as a beginner trying to research um, what sponge filters do, how they work and things like that, I will run through that in this video so stay tuned and uh, I'll teach you how they work. I'll also let you know uh, my thoughts and some of the pros and cons of converting your fish room to sponge filters and uh, why you may or may not want to do that. So the first thing to consider is that there are many different shapes and sizes. Say for example we've got a smaller one here and a bit of a larger one here. So um, what you're going to see on the box is they're going to be rated for different aquarium sizes and things like that. I wouldn't really pay too much attention to that. For me, I just recommend picking up the biggest sponge filter that you can comfortably fit inside the aquarium. So obviously if your aquarium is two times the size of that, then probably don't squeeze that one in. But if you've got a four foot aquarium and this one's box for some reason says that it will be suitable for that, you know, it's not going to hurt you to get a big one. All that it's going to do is provide you more surface area to harbor bacteria. So the way that sponge filters work is they have a little inlet there that you connect an airline hose to, to an air pump, and it's basically going to send bubbles down and then up. And that's going to create a siphon, basically because the air moving up draws water through it as well. So when water is drawn through that pipe, it has to come from somewhere. So it has to go in through the sponge and then up the tube and that's how a sponge filter works. You have water flow through this media which you know has surface area in it that bacteria grows on and that bacteria is what's going to convert your uh, waste to a non-toxic substance in nitrate. If you're not quite sure about um, bacteria and things like that, I won't touch on it too much in this video, maybe a future video down the track. So it might be worthwhile hitting subscribe on this channel if you want to see more videos on the nitrogen cycle and how that works. But what's important to know is you might be thinking, oh, I've seen other filters where they use uh, sponge, ceramic stuff, and then maybe some um, carbon or something like that. And, and is this as good as that? Well, for me, I don't really believe in using carbon. It helps um, to bring out some of the smells or color in your water. So you're not going to get that with the sponge filter. But for the most part, sponges are really great media for filtration because it also, it works mechanically and biologically where you're gonna actually pull the floating bits out of the water as it goes through this sponge. And also there's gonna be plenty of little nooks and crannies for bacteria to grow upon. So I only really use sponge unless I run a canister filter, which we will talk about the different filters as this video progresses. So what's so good about sponge filters over other methods of filtration? Well, the first two are probably the biggest two and that's that these little guys here are super cheap and super affordable and that they run on air, which is really economical. So they're a great long-term financial investment if you wanna run a fish room. So um, especially when you run planted tropical tanks, you got so much power draw happening with the heaters and the lights that are growing all the plants and the heaters that are keeping your fish alive that you really wanna limit the amount of power consumption you're doing on top of that. So the joy with this being an air-driven filter is that you can just run airline through a manifold and then that will all lead back to one giant air pump which is going to be pretty much the most economical way that you can filter a whole fish room. If you have eight or more tanks it's probably going to be a huge financial saving for you to run your fish room on air. Anything below that it's really going to be kind of comparable with an air pump big enough if you're not uh, running enough sponge filters off of it you're going to just have to bleed off a lot of that air and then it's kind of electricity that you're consuming for no good reason. Unfortunately after those two big positives that's kind of where the positives stop with sponge filters. They are massive key points and they're ones that may or may not uh, override the rest. In my case I believe they do override the rest but what we'll talk about now is the negatives and the drawbacks to using sponge filters um, in your fish room. So the first thing is kind of a preference thing I guess but they're pretty ugly. They take up you know usually a back corner of your aquarium and for people that aren't familiar with what they are it kind of looks like a weird object that's just in the back corner of the aquarium so they take up space and they're not that pretty so that is a factor when you're trying to create you know 
basically a living piece of art inside your house. So I think those are, that's a pretty big drawback to sponge filters. They're probably, I would suggest, maybe debatably with canister filters, the most annoying filters to clean. Typical process to clean these guys is you gotta get your whole arm in the tank, you're all wet and then there's water everywhere. Then you gotta pull the sponge filter out. It's a great idea to actually put a fish bag around it because if you don't, you just lift the sponge filter and all the waste that has been sucked up for the entire time it's been running is now all in your aquarium. But I guess on the plus side, there's less to clean out of the sponge filter that way. But then you go get some buckets and you rinse it in some tank water and it's all good. And then you connect it back up and you put it back in and it just spews more, um, more brown, chocolate milkshake water everywhere and your tank looks like a mess for two or three hours afterwards. So it's just generally a bit of an inconvenience cleaning sponge filters. You kind of have to really prepare yourself for an afternoon getting uh, down and dirty when it comes to sponge filter maintenance. As well as that, outside of the box, they're not really that efficient, especially if you run a lot of air through them, which a lot of people want to do, you know, just by default. So there is a bit of a detraction from the, uh, one of the major selling points of sponge filters being the cost effectiveness in that to get them to run the most efficient that you can, you really have to put some further investment into things like air stones and air line so that you can connect those into the inside, get a lot finer bubbles, and uh, that's going to really increase the efficiency in the sponge filter. I'll explain that though in a future video. Um, we won't delve into that today, but the point is that there is going to be costs on top of the original filter. It's not like an internal filter, hang on back filter or canister filter where you buy the box and then you have the filter ready to go. Uh, you buy the sponge filter, but you still need the airline and everything else that goes with it to get it to run. If you just simply throw this in the tank, Maybe it will harbor some back beneficial bacteria, but it will never actually suck particulates out of the water. So I would suggest that a drawback is that it doesn't come ready to work out of the box. Another major drawback is that you basically have two choices and neither one of them is really perfect. You can go down the super coarse sponge route here, which is going to go a long time without needing cleaning. But in the long run, you're, you're not going to have finely polished water you might still see the odd little speck flying around your aquarium, which is a bit unsightly. So then you might decide to choose the super fine sponge, but the trouble with that is that you'll find yourself having to squeeze them out every week or even less than because it will clog up so fast with all those little fine particles. So there's just no real perfect solution yet. Um, in the coarseness of sponge. So it's not like other filters where you can layer up different densities of sponge to help solve that problem. Say for example, with the hang on back, you can actually put coarse, medium, fine sponge in that order and then the coarse is gonna catch the big stuff, the medium's gonna catch the medium and so on. And you'll just um, create a bit more longevity between having to have a clogged up sponge. So in that regard, sponge filters are a little bit one paced in that they're sort of um, all or nothing in what they're gonna let through. So um, I would suggest that that's a bit of a downside to sponge filters. And last but not least, especially for beginners, they're kind of hard to tell actually if they're working or not. So for example, this one here, which we previously just covered off is a super fine sponge filter. Well, you could have this connected up to your air pump but it could be totally clogged and you have no idea how much water is actually being pulled through it. So um, you could have your sponge filter sitting there for a long time and it actually not even be doing anything and you're not even realizing. So um, for those of us that run 30 to 40 tanks, it's very hard to keep up with um, how your sponge filters are tracking unless you have you know, a regularly maintained schedule. A lot of people just don't have the time or energy to know exactly how long it's been um, between sponge filter cleans. So for that reason, um, you could easily accidentally um, crash your tank and things like that, or just not be filtering your tank as effectively as you could by simply not being aware that your sponge filter is not being as efficient as it could be. So you go guys, this is my um, video about the pros and cons of sponge filters. For me, the pros still far outweigh the cons and I've been super happy ever since I made the switch to sponge filtration for my fish room. I would recommend before you go and order 50 or 60 of them, maybe just buy a little air pump and just give one or two a go. It's not gonna be as effective um, and, and you will certainly notice a huge difference when you get like a big LP60 or something, like a big linear piston air pump. But I would just suggest 
you give them a go before making a final verdict and decide for yourself. But um, those are my pros and cons for today. Hopefully you found this video informative. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, it always helps me out to smash like, hit subscribe and all that fun stuff. Other than that, I'll catch you on the next one. Have a great day.